Uh, good afternoon. My name is James Carter. I'm an attorney with the Cochran firm, Trials and Mass Torts. And we are here situated in the birthplace of the founder of the Cochran firm, Mr. Johnny Cochran. And I must say that he would be deeply disappointed and very concerned about what took place last year in the tragic death of Mr. Tommy McLaughlin. We are here today, along with the McLaughlin family, to announce the filing of a federal lawsuit in the Western District of Louisiana to redress and address and to attempt a long journey of justice for the McLaughlin family relative to the wrongful, unlawful, and brutal death of Mr. McLaughlin. We have here today members of Mr. McLaughlin's family. We have his dad, Mr. Tommy McLaughlin Sr. We have his daughter, Tamara Jones. We have his big sister, or sister, <laughs> Macronia Morgan. We have his sister, Laquita McLaughlin. We have his son, Avery Jones. We have his niece, Alandria Morgan. We have his son, Tommy McLaughlin the third here. And along with that, we also have Minister Marvin Muhammad here to support us and give us the type of support that a situation so serious like this is deserving of. And we also have Ms. Breaker Peoples here who's about to come up here also. So we want to say in one strong voice that we are demanding justice. We're not going to give up until justice is served and that the city of Shreveport should accept this responsibility and a court of law is going to demand this responsibility be had. At this particular point, we're going to allow various members of the, the family to say a few words to you. First, we'll start with Ms. Laquita McLaughlin. Hi, um, my name is Laquita McLaughlin and the loss of my brother has been very traumatic on me and it is affecting my life in ways that I never thought that it would affect me. As far as suffering from anxiety, when anyone leaves, I'm always terrified that they're never gonna come back, that I may never see them again. From the depression that I feel when I can't even get out, out of bed some days, because it's not the big moments that affect your life, it's the small moments. Like if a rainstorm comes, my brother's not there for us to just sit outside and look at the rainfall. He's not there when we're working on projects around the house and I miss him every day. And I wish that things could have been different and he was still here because I feel like he was taken way too soon. And just the day-to-day -day grief has been overbearing for us all. Thank you. Next we will have Mr. Avery Jones, his son. Um, how you doing? Um, name's Avery Jones. Um, we've been through a lot of adversity with everything that's been going on. As we pro as we approach the one year mark of my father's passing, um, we couldn't even bring our mother um, to this event. Um, I was told God sends his toughest warriors to fight in the toughest battles. And I feel that because I'm still looking for justice for Tommy. And that's all I got to go on right now, guys. Thank you very much. We'd like to say that Miss Kimberly McLaughlin has passed since the passing of her husband, and in part due to a broken heart and, and the, the grief that she experienced from the, the death of her husband. Now we'll have Mr. Tommy McLaughlin III, his son, to say a few words. How y'all doing? It just it, it just been really hard for, for all of us. You know, my dad, you know, he played, I mean, roles in all our lives, was there any like anything we needed. Like with him not being there with us is it's tough. Like it is it, life is just not the same. And you know, and it's and it really hurts being lied to and not being, you know, did not just not knowing what happened to you to, to your dad after so long, just wondering, you know, I just know something wasn't right. I mean, I just had, I just knew something wasn't right. And the two months 
a video came out just like I thought, you know, if something was, you know, it's, it's, it's just tragic to know, not knowing what happened to your father. Two months later, to find out he was beat, beat to death. I mean, it, it, I mean it, it's hurting every single day. And that, that's all I, I really have to say. It just, it's just, it's really tough. Thank you. Thank you. And we're also going to have Miss Tamara Jones, who is also Mr. McLaughlin's daughter. My name is Tamara Jones, and I am the youngest child of Tommy McLaughlin. My dad meant a lot to us, and to know that he passed very soon before he was supposed to, it hurts. Every day we think about him, every day we see something that reminds us of him, and it's not right, it's not fair for someone to be taken from us. The injustice that goes on here it has to stop. We want change. We want justice from him. His death date is approaching, and it has been almost a year since he has been a Summers hashtag. But he wasn't just a Summers hashtag. He was a person, a living, breathing person. He was my dad. And to know that I can't call him whenever I want, text him random pictures, it hurts. We want something to be done about this because he wasn't just a name that you saw on Facebook or social media. He meant something to us. Every day we still think about him. And like Mr. James said, my mom recently died and she died grieving him. And it's unbearable to lose two parents in a matter of 10 months. It's overwhelming. And we want peace, we want equality, and we want justice. We want to see change happen, and we want it now. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I wanna, I wanna highlight that um, Avery Jones and Tamara Jones, the son and daughter of Mr. McLaughlin, now is without mom and dad, both parents dead at 20, the early, early to mid 20s. But we now have Mr. Minister Marvin Muhammad who's gonna say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. The Nation of Islam Muhammad Study Group of Shreveport, we stand in solidarity with Attorney Carter, the McLaughlin family for their call for justice. Thank you. Thank you. We're also gonna have Ms. Greeka Peoples to say a few words. Um, quite so often when we turn on our television or look on social media, we see that police brutality is starting to be the new norm. We must show a united front to send a clear message across Louisiana and the United States that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. We're going to hold all accountable, even the ones that hate evidence, we're going to hold them accountable. Thank y'all and I appreciate y'all for following us. Thank you. All uh, right. We'll take a few questions now, if there are any. Correct. Can you speak to that? Yeah, the city of Shreveport, upon our delivering to them a demand in October of last year, gave us no formal response. And so they didn't respond, which is, speaks to the recalcitrant, um, merci merciful list approach that the city has taken relative to the tragic death of Mr. McLaughlin. And so therefore, the, the United States legal system provides an opportunity for us to receive uh, redress in the court system. And so that's what we did. We filed this federal lawsuit in the Western District of Louisiana, and we intend to get justice one way or another. We have some ideas about that. We don't want to uh, talk about that right now, but certainly we have multiple individuals that we intend to address, obviously all four police officers. Uh, et cetera. So um, there's a long list of individuals that have relevant information relative to the prosecution of this case that we certainly will actually go forth and depose and, and get information on. So 
Well, they have uh, certain deadlines they have to uh, respond to, so it's going to happen pretty soon. Well, we, we're still, through our discovery process, we've been limited with regard to the discovery that we have in terms of, so we are, we're, at this particular time, we are bringing, you all right? You're all right? They may be added when information becomes available. <laughs> or they might be added, let's say. I can't, I can't tell you specifically what that is because I'm not in control of that. However, the federal court tends to work more expeditiously than certain state courts relative to this type of matter. So um, I think the timelines would be a little bit sooner than in, in some, other, some other venues. There, there, are, there are some strategic advantages of that. Um, we, we certainly would like to see convictions of those officers, and it's certainly helpful for a, a lower threshold burden there. But we would like to see justice in the criminal side as well as the civil side. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming out. The McLaughlin family appreciates you for providing good um, transparency and information to the general public, the good folks of Shreveport and the surrounding area. We think it's important that we come forth and sort of explain to you what we're doing as steps go forward. And if there's any other material move that we make, we will certainly put you on notice and give you an opportunity to provide information to the, the citizens of the state of Louisiana and the nation. Thank you so much.